I'm a hustler, baby. That's my dad's maybe. Yeah, I'm a hustler, baby. Simeon Mobile Disco? Who's who? I'm Jas. I'm James. I'm a hustler, baby. Um, the word Simeon is ape-like. Um, and the name Simeon Mobile Disco came uh, from the fact that we were in a band called Simeon. Mm -hmm. And we made a mixtape um, while we were in the band called Simeon Mobile Disco. Because it was a bit of a joke. A mobile disco in England is... Um, <laughs> some two kind of sweaty bearded old guys with maybe comb overs and some flashing lights um, traveling around playing disco music yeah. to young kids which is not far from what we are yeah. you also said in your biography that uh, you mostly like sweaty little places <laughs> how about that James likes sweaty little places. Uh, that was a separate. Why? <laughs> no, Jess is just joking with you. Um, yeah, it's, it's really like I mean, we, we do play in some quite big clubs like like Fabric in London. We play at, but like somehow, as a big club, they maintain the atmosphere of a sweaty club, usually because it is incredibly sweaty. It's like there's something great about playing in a venue where it's just completely going off, and there's something horrible about playing, regardless of how big or how you know how large a club is, if it's like a bit too cool a bit too reserved you yeah. know like we're just like the best one like recently we played for a friend just in a little bar people were like jumping up and down on the bar and like kicking tables over and you know the decks were skipping and it was the sound was rubbish but we really really enjoyed it you know it's just a good night yeah and are you doing some gigs this summer we're doing loads of gigs this summer yeah. our diary is gone completely black um, yeah. I, I checked the tour, the tour dates but yeah. you don't play in Belgium no, we well, actually, no, we are. Yeah, we're going to play, is it the Door Festival? Because we were going to do Puckle Pop, but we couldn't do it because I'm going to be away producing something. But um, the Door Festival we're playing, apparently, which is out here, a really yeah, good little festival. Yeah. So, a little, it's yeah. not, not as little. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 140 bands or something? Yeah, that's little to us. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, you, you produced <laughs> albums for the Arctic Monkeys and uh, the Klaxons. How different is that to, to the stuff that you do for Simeon Mobile Disco? Uh, very different. Um, it, it's different every time. Like, the Arctic was completely different from the Klaxons, which is completely different to any, anything else I've done, but that's what I like about it, you know, it's always a challenge and always thinking on your feet, so yeah, it's it's good. <laughs> yeah, and which of the two jobs do you see as real hard work? None of them actually, yeah. which is I think good, because I, I, you know, you may as well be a plumber or something, you know, I'm, yeah. it all, always feels like playing and like, tr you know, trying things out and experimenting and doing things for the first time, which hopefully it always will. Yeah. Um, on the new album, um, there are a lot of tracks with a beat. Um, <laughs> it's the beat, huh? Uh, but there are also a few laid-back songs. Is that a risky combination? Uh, I don't think it is. Yeah. Like you know, I mean, t to be honest, f when like all those tracks, with the exception of the last one, um, which has no beat. Mm -hmm. Um, they're all kind of made with clubs in mind and then when we put them onto an album we thought this doesn't make an album you know an album for me is something that you can listen to end to end it's kind of like it's almost like a like an old school thing and so we chopped them right down and actually found that within these kind of club tracks there was a song and so just chopped them right down and the album's really really short you know it's kind of the songs are short it's it's a listening. We, we wanted it to work as the rock album works, you know, we wanted it to have peaks and troughs and, you know, some quiet songs and weird songs, some poppy songs, some, you know, kind of energy songs, you know, we wanted it to work as a as a journey like a, a tr an old album should, you know, and, um, you know, especially in the days of uh, the, the modern days where the album is about to die a death, you know, we, we, we really wanna, wanted to make a body of work, you know. Yeah. Okay, and uh, the vocals uh, were done by Ninja from the Go Team. Yeah, we've got we've got a few. We've got Ninja yeah. from the Go Teams on it. There's a guy called Barry who from a um, a great band called Claw, um, R.I.P. And um, <laughs> the <laughs> and um, there is uh, Simon Lord, funnily enough, who used to be in Simeon, um, and Shah who did that track called Hustler and to be honest we tried out lots of vocalists um, and they they were just the ones that kind of stuck the easiest you know and we we kind of shied away from 
try, you know, trying to use anyone big, like, you know, obviously like the Arctics and the Claxons, you yeah. know, and stuff like that. But we wanted to, you know, we didn't want it to turn into something like Uncle or something like that, where it's more about the collaborations than the artist. We wanted to make a make an album that was our album, you know. Yeah. In the clip Hustler, uh, it turns out to be one big lesbian orgy. Yeah. Uh, is that something that belongs in your f into your fantasy or something? Th that's just living in London. It's like yeah. that every day. You know, you go out and there's just lesbians everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, actually, it isn't. It wasn't our fantasy, to be honest. It was um, this guy called Sam, who's this dirty little pervert we know <laughs> and um, he was also happens to be like a genius video maker and he was just like oh, I've got a really good idea for a video if you can get 10 girls wasted I can film them and we said yes it sounds so wrong, yeah doesn't it? it sounds really really wrong the, the thing about Sam though is I, I would trust him to do anything he's maybe not after that but uh, I wouldn't <laughs> <laughs> How important is it actually to to have a video clip with a song with a new single? It's important, I think. You know, especially in like say the days of YouTube and mm -hmm. stuff like that. I think I don't think it's that important to spend a million pounds on a video. You know, I think I think you can just have a good idea and and you know do it with a mate with a video camera. But I think it's good to have some kind of visual representation of of your music. You know. Yeah. Okay. What do you think about people downloading your music illegally? Actually, it's it's really good. Yeah. Um, I mean, to be honest, you know, like w we did some gigs um, in Scandinavia recently, mm -hmm. and the record's not out, and there's no way they could have had it. And when we put it's the beat on, everyone cheered, and we were like, "How the hell did you get this?" Yeah. Like, you know, it's like it's it's people who check him out, check him out. I'll be interested to see what happens with the whole blog culture. Because at the moment it feels like it's it's like yeah. it's the glory days of yeah. blogs at the moment because there isn't really m any like well n not even that everything's for free but like the people generally speaking the people that run the blogs mm. are people that love music it's not gone all corporate yet and I'm sure some you know fairly soon people are going to get on it and start figuring out ways to get their brand on it but generally speaking if you read a blog it's someone who loves music they've gone to a record store bought it gone I love this I want to tell the world about it mm -hmm. like that's a really cool thing you know and blogs and and stuff like that like myspace is that the ideal way to get known um I don't know it's, it's a way to get known I think like you know now because I suppose bands like the Arctics and Lily Allen and all that lot are famously yeah. even though it's a lot of it's really untrue famously kind of got famous <laughs> through myspace you just you know like on our myspace we just get like hundreds of like random bands a day really desperately going oh please listen to our stuff and it's like that's not going to do anyone any favors at the end of the day do you know what i mean like you're not gonna just get on myspace as an unknown you know email loads of people and suddenly be an overnight success it doesn't work that way yeah. you know but i think if if you're a good band and you've already kind of you know you're building up some momentum by playing some good gigs and you've putting out some good things or whatever then MySpace is a, and, and whatever is a great way of getting your stuff out to people. But it's not, you're not going to just be able to get on there and go, right, okay, now I'm going to be a, a super overnight sensation by spamming everybody. It doesn't work like that. You know? yeah. So you're in Brussels from t nine o'clock this morning, I guess. Um, what you going to do when, yeah. when, when the interviews stop? We're going to go see Chick Chick Chick, who yeah. are playing a bit later. Um, and then we're probably going to have no sleep and go immediately to Amsterdam. <laughs> but that's cool, you know, it's fun. We're, we're getting used to not sleeping very much. Okay, um, fucked up biorhythms. Yeah, fucked up biorhythms, man. <laughs> yeah, that, that would have been a better name for the album, wouldn't it? That would be the album too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks for the interview. Cool, too. Thanks. self-harm <laughs> <laughs> um, no, <I> mean, <laughs> <laughs>